cock do I have your attention? So, ladies and gentlemen, planes can fly and so can Jonathan, but what if humanity wants to incredibly efficiently put down itself? Well, I don't get into the geopolitical intricacies of why humanity wants to put down itself, but I do get into the masterpieces of machinery that can do a lot more than just fly that are created to do so. So in this video, I will talk about the world's coolest duelist fighter jets, but first, intro time. War is bad, but planes are rad. Um, this just got in. Uh, half of you guys don't know what this is. Are you stupid? It's a headband. It's not that obvious. I'm not hiding my hairline. Anyway, fifth generation fighter jets are the baddest motherfuckers out there right now, and they all have some basic similarities. They're all made to be stealthy. Oh, didn't see that. Meaning they all try to minimize their radar cross section, or RCS. What does that mean though? Radar cross section. What? You just said RCS means radar cross section. Well, a radar throws out electromagnetic waves that bounce off stuff back to a receiver. And depending on which angle and on what surface a wave hits a target, the receiver either picks up more reflections or less. Now, the angle thing kind of makes sense. I don't get it. But what do I mean with surface? Well, you see, electromagnetic waves can be absorbed and dissipated by some materials like dinosaurs. Now, the exact <laughs> now the exact composition of materials used often is classified, but generally advanced composite dinosaurs are used. So every single part of these fighters is met meticulously designed to reflect as little as possible. This also means that missiles are stored inside of the jet in an internal weapons bay. Do you want to inspect my internal weapons bay? My god, Jonathan. If you say so. Now we talked about the similarities, now let's get into the nitty gritty. So superpowers tend to make super planes. So we're gonna look at and compare China's J-20 Mighty Dragon, Russia's Su-57 Felon, and the USA's F-22 Raptor. The J-20. What's the J-20's NATO reporting name? Don't, don't do that. Come on. Say it. Fucking faggin' bro. So let's start with the aspect of stealth. So China hasn't published any info on the J-20's RCS. Tell me your secrets, John. But the Aircraft 101 made a very good simulation of what it could be. And now list in a simplified version what they considered when making the estimation. So obviously the shape, and of course every shape is beautiful in its own way. And I mean like really the shape. So these little fuckers and also these downward facing vertical stabilizers, which by the way, give the J-20 a fairly sizable extra surface for radar to bounce off of. Also they considered stuff like the pilot tube and the pilot lube and the sensor layouts, etc. And this brings us to another stealthy aspect. They simulated its S-shaped air intakes. Once again, I'll explain what this is. What is it? So having exposed fan blades leads to a higher RCS. So what do you do? You put them back here and you make the tubes go like that. And then you coat the inside with radar absorbent material. And then it's, then it's not exposed. However, it is worth noting that this simulation did not factor in RAM coating, radar absorbent material coating on external surfaces. They only factored in treatment on trailing and leading edges. All in all, uh, all in all, the Aircraft 101 measured an average RCS of 0.28 in the X-band region, which, for reference, is 3.5 times higher than the F-35A's RCS, and naturally, this also means that it's a good bit higher than the F-22's. However, this figure alone doesn't really say much about the stealth characteristics of a jet, so if you want more details, I link their website in the description. So, how's the J-20's maneuverability? Well, it's good. Not as good as mine. That's goddamn right, Jonathan. It has that triple Dorito configuration, which is known for good supersonic and transonic turn performance, because you know them Doritos are dangerous. Also, it has an all-moving control surfaces, and like most fifth-generation aircraft, an extremely high instability. And later variants are planned to have better engines with thrust vectoring nozzles. So, you know. Also, if you want to know how instability affects maneuverability, watch this video. Shameless self-promo. Did you say something? So now comes everyone's favorite, the Su-57. Now, this plane actually gets a lot of hate. Why? Well, because it's not very stealthy. It's okay, Sugoi chan Is it your NATO reporting name again? I mean, yeah, it has all the stuff I mentioned at the beginning, but just not as good. For example, just by using your balls of the eyes, you can tell that it has limited RAM coating on its external surfaces. Filthy weeb. You wanna go, bro? On top of that, it doesn't have S-shaped air intakes like the J-20, F-22, or F-35. Damn, rap god. Which leads to it being easily detectable in the jet's direction of travel, which is not very good. Look, there it is. Also, the canopy is just a normal canopy without stealth features, which, you know, can be picked up by radar. And this also goes for these little fuckers when they're not covered up. 
All of this leads to an overall average RCS published by Sukhoi themselves of 0.1 to 1 meter squared, which compared to the other fifth generation aircraft is very bad. Now, even though its stealth is kind of ass, the SU-57 might very well be the most maneuverable jet in today's video. Why? Well, similar to the J-20, it has large all-moving horizontal and vertical stabilizers, which like for the J-20 is a bit of a drawback for stealth, but you know, is good for maneuverability. And like all modern fighter jets, it has an advanced fly-by-wire flight control system because it's an extremely unstable plane. That's not a bad thing. And not only that, it has thrust vectoring nozzles for all control axis. Axi, what's the plural of axis? Also enabling it to be incredibly good at post-stall maneuvers. Damn, what's that? Looks like today's sponsor. Jonathan, you disgusting, sexy genius, you. Thank you to Astral Framing for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you want cool metal posters purely for all your fighter jet poster desires, Astral Framing is for you. They have over a hundred designs of various popular jets like this one. Oh my god, is that the F-14 from the famous movie Top Gun? No, the designs are AI generated and later tweaked by hand, an epic collaboration of machine and man. No, but seriously, I know that AI is a little bit of a topic, but these posters simply look undeniably cool. So here it is in person again, and as you can see, it obviously looks incredibly cool. And if you want to feel it, it also feels really nice because you can like feel the textures and the afterburner and stuff. So please go check them out and make sure to use the promo code SPACEY for 10% off when getting your beautiful poster. Now back to the video. Now comes America. That's the Russian national anthem. I'm trying to be politically neutral. The F-22 Raptor. Now, a lot of people that mingle around the aviation community will tell you that the F-22 could literally be God, and now I don't totally disagree, I just think that it's good to be somewhat realistic. So why don't we take a look at why the F-22 could be God. It's stealthier than me when I'm watching porn. Like the F-35, the F-22 probably has the most advanced RAM coding. It has serpentine air intakes and the most radar dispersing shape. Also, look how smooth it is. Also, unlike the other two jets, it has flat engine nozzles that can thrust vector, but we'll get to that later, and a cooling system that can reduce its infrared signature. I think you need a cooling system to reduce your infrared signature. And also, unlike the other two jets, its vertical control surfaces aren't fully movable, which is a bit of a drawback for maneuverability, but is better for stealth. It is also simply smaller than the other two. The J-20, in particular, is a pretty big plane. Let's go, small is better. So, in terms of maneuverability, like I said, it doesn't have fully movable vertical stabilizers, but it does have fully movable horizontal ones that are almost the size of an entire F-16 wing. And it has two dimensional thrust vectoring nozzles. So all of this, as well as the very good thrust to weight ratio, allows it to do complex maneuvers just like the other two. So in summary, I think we'd need two to take God.